Developing now, the teenager accused in the shooting death of a 24-year-old woman at a community center last week appeared in juvenile court today. 15-year-old killed a 24-year-old woman at a community center. More rec centers. A 24-year-old woman at a community center last week appeared in juvenile court today. Avente Solomon appeared before a judge on a preliminary hearing. The 15-year-old expected to be charged as an adult for his alleged role in Atea Nichols' death last Wednesday. Police say the witnesses told them that a fight broke out before the shooting happened. Solomon will remain in custody until his hearing that is scheduled for next week. That little twerk killed that woman, man. That little twerk killed this woman. Yeah. Solomon appeared before a judge. The little twerp killed that woman. Man. Everywhere. It's everywhere you look. It's the same shit. Unbelievable. Terrible. It's so sad, man. It's so fucking sad. That little shit stays going to be out by the time he's 18. The witnesses yeah, told them that a fight broke out before the shooting happened. Solomon will remain in custody until his hearing that is scheduled for next week. Almost a week ago, that shooting outside a community center in the Hilltop ended a young woman's life. Ate Nichols was killed, leaving behind a two-year-old son. And today, Nichols' mother is speaking out about the pain that she's felt since losing her daughter. NBC4's Anna Hoffman joins us now live. Anna, you sat down with Nichols' mom today. How is she doing after all of this? Jen and Brad, Latanya Nichols tells me that she's broken and angry. She says Atea was the light and joy of her life. And now with that light going dark, she's not sure where to go from here. I miss my best friend. Latanya Nichols says she can remember the day her baby, Atea Nichols, took her first breath now holding her as she took her last from a senseless act of gun violence. I can't describe it. I relive it every night. I thought I haven't slept since Wednesday. Um, she says sorry. I'm always sorry. I don't know if it was sorry she's not going to be here. Sorry that she got shot. Atea was just 24. Damn, years. that's fucking terrible. She told her mom sorry that she was dying. This fucking all we god damn. A community center. Just being there, being proximal. There was a fight. Fifteen year old pulled out a gun and just fired haphazardly at the community center. But this is the thing. They don't. The reason they don't respect their community, they didn't build it. They didn't put the brick on top of the brick and build it. So what, being in America, they just get a community center, a big state-of-the-art community center just built for them. They have no investment in it. So they they don't care about it. They don't see it as, this is our community center. The white man just gives them stuff. Because it was given to them yeah. instead of earning it. Exactly. Ah, what you talking about, man? We built this country. <laughs> right, right. You only because y'all were forced to uh, whip if you didn't. <laughs> she said, man. They just like the fifteen year old. First of all, they shouldn't be fighting down there. Second of all, no way a fifteen year old just pulls out a gun and just starts shooting haphazardly at that place. But they but it's a, to think of what the the woke people would say yak about about that 15 year old you know yeah. shut the fuck up he's a murderer he shouldn't have fucking did, did what he did how about that yeah he knows what guns do i don't want to hear that 15 year old shit these little he's probably already shot people before sorry that she got shot Atea was just 24 years old when she was killed last Wednesday at a shooting near the Glenwood Community Center. Another 18-year-old was also injured. The accused shooter, 15-year-old Avante Solomon, was injured as well. He is now in police custody, being tried as an adult, charged with murder and felonious assault. 
I'm angry that he had a gun. But he's a kid. But he should not have had a gun. So. Boom. God, she's crazy. Tired of hearing that. Jesus Christ, your daughter's dead. Have some respect for your daughter's life. Don't right. forgive him already. Let let your daughter like well, bury her before you forgive this little fucker. Hey, shit. Or, or or how about this side? Don't forgive him. It's okay. Right. Jesus, but they can't do that. So you gotta just say at least bury your fucking daughter before you forgive this little piece of shit who's gonna be laughing in court. When they fucking, when, when the court day, he'll be laughing, looking around, laughing and shit, smiling all around, so slyly smiling and, and snickering and shit in court and shit. The first like question she should have asked was, where the hell was his mother? You don't want to know. No, but that, right. that that's the first question she should ask. Not well, how did he get a gun? Is that, where were his mother? Where were his parents? Where's his no. father? Oh, we know where he's—he's he's nowhere. <laughs> right. And, and the, cause, cause I and I and I'm gonna be honest. I know exactly what that shorty's doing. Right. He's in jail. He's hanging out, eating commissary, playing basketball, mm -hmm. watching mm -hmm. TV, shooting the shit, maybe fight. Not giving a shit at all about this lady's daughter, no. or, or who unaffected by what he did. He doesn't know the magnitude of what he did. He doesn't. He knows it's going to be the consequences are going to be at the at the best he gets out of eighteen. At the worst, he gets out of twenty one. And right, as you exactly. said, as you said, he's in there. He's not in there breaking rocks. You know what I'm no. saying? He's he's in there fucking hanging out and chilling with his other, with his homeboys from his neighborhood and his homeboys from his city. That he probably right. already knows. The, the worst thing that could happen to him, Mike, is he's in a pie with his enemies and they're beating his ass. Yeah. That's, worse. that's not going to happen because he's going to fucking, uh, he, he might be popular. He might be, he might be like a guy that's respected in there where now it's just a fucking. He might be beating his ass. Yeah. yeah. He, he Depends just, on the current, though. Yeah, this, this guy, this, this fucking, she's ready to forgive him. He's a kid. But he should not have had a gun. So, my. And here's the thing: is it the fact that he had a gun that's the problem, or the fact that he just shoots recklessly any chance he gets is the problem? They keep making it seem like the gun is the problem. It's not they're the gun. Right. They're afraid. To, they're afraid to face reality that they young they young young people are just as, can be just as violent as adults. And the problem is, you have to actually deal with them as adults, and you can't deal with them with soft gloves. They start making an example of these super gremlins and then the other ones will, oh, shit. Oh, did you hear they arrested John Quavius last week for what he did? And they're putting him to death and then start spreading the word. Like, oh, yeah, we got to watch out. We got to chill out. Hey, yeah. they're going to start line, getting in line. But it's yeah. women like her who make excuses for boys like that. Yeah. See, yeah. see, see, it never fixed because of people like her. Because of before you pass judgment on him, you also have to pass judgment on yourself as to these women who are raising these boys. So right? we got to start passing child services laws to hold them accountable. Like, uh, we'll start out with uh, uh, strict curfews. If they're out past a certain time, uh, you know. But eventually... these are the women who run child services. See, Maybe, in order yeah. to fix the system, you have to get rid of the problem. And the people women? like this, yes women and yeah. weak women yeah. women and weak men they are the problem they're the ones destroying our society because they're the ones who keep making excuses for people right i would, I would suggest getting uh, anything dealing with judi judicial services anything anything dealing with violence in terms of government action maybe women shouldn't be a part of it because they can't because you can't have any because there are times you can't have any compassion for you know, for people like, for, especially for, you know, if someone's going to show compassion to a 15 year old who just murders, who just murdered someone, um, then, then, then I think we got, some, we got bigger problems to address. Well, even look at the women in corrections, how they always catch them sleeping with inmates, helping inmates escape. Women have no place in those areas of discipline. They're too emotional. They have no place in those areas. Yeah, let me, let me continue. My, my G, my G don't have his mommy back. 
and he's not getting a ride. Atea had a two-year-old son that Nichols will now help raise. She says he has all the best qualities of his mom. Yeah, that's Jay. That's my heart. This is the second child Nichols has lost to gun violence. In 2020, her son, No Fear, was shot and killed. I oh my God. Jesus Christ. Fear was shot and killed. I honestly... Jesus, she's lost two kids to gun violence in the last two years? Jesus Christ. These stories are fucking horrible, man. Yeah, they are. God damn. Jesus fucking. Again, I nobody's covering this. They're not. Yeah, we're the only place that's covering this shit. Make sure you hit the PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, support the channel. Um, yeah, this is this is this is this is God, no fear. Yes, his name was No Fear. God damn. The Huh? This woman got to be on some kind of sedation, some kind of heavily sedated drugs. That's Jay. That's my heart. This is the second child Nichols has lost to gun violence. In 2020, her son, No Fear, was shot and killed. I honestly didn't own up to my son being dead. Always put in my head, he's away at camp. Because it was so fun. I still call and text his phone every day. So now I had to admit I don't have just, yeah, I have two babies gone to gun violence to somebody under the age of 21, did it? Wow. Her, her children were killed by kids. Still monsters. Yeah, these... These stories are fucking terrible, man. Jesus Christ. A mother left distraught, but now motivated to fight for change. We have to demonstrate. We have to protest. I don't care if we sit up and just sit at City Hall and make them listen to us. Something has to be done. Nichols tells me that she's not sure what to tell her grandson every time he asks for his mommy. She says she's not going to stop fighting until something is done to stop this violence. Local for you in Columbus, I'm Anna Hoffman, NBC4. Jesus Christ. Violence will never stop. God. It will never, it will never stop. That's just, a re that's just reality. Um, and that you're fooling yourself if you think that just like more programs are going to stop this. No, it just it's it it's it's just what it is. Um, and then and then and they're facing it without consequences. They the consequences they face need to be, like I said, more severe than what it is that they're actually doing out there. Right. We got a um we got a um a ten dollar PayPal from Patrick Duff. Duffy, salute, man. Appreciate you, man. He says thank you, Op. Salute, man. Damn, man. This shit. I ain't gonna lie, man. <laughs> these last, these last couple stories have gotten to me, man. I uh, usually don't, 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 don't. Um, you know, usually don't think about this stuff like this. My God, these are terrible stories. Man. <laughs> Yo, I always say, Doctor Akintunde, not to be confused with Doctor Efi Tunde. <laughs> A Charlotte-based movement set to honor fathers considered trailblazers in the community. For five years, Black Fathers Rock has worked to change the stereotypical absentee narrative of Black fatherhood. And our own Fred... The stereotypical absentee narrative? That's a, that's a stereotype and a narrative? Fathers Rock has worked to change the stereotypical absentee narrative of black fatherhood. Mm. And our own Fred Shropshire was honored by the group when it first began. He spoke with the founder who says tomorrow's celebration has special significance as it falls on Juneteenth. By the looks of these smiles, you never guess Ryan Jorel grew up without the very person he uplifts. I grew up without a dad. And so for me, I never wanted my kids to experience that. Instead of waiting on someone 
to change that narrative. I decided to do it myself. For five years, Black Fathers Rock has honored who Jor-El calls America's unsung hero. Society paints that Black fathers are absent. There's reasons for that, but we don't want to focus on that. <laughs> Instead, the focus is on another. Society paints mm. that Black fathers are absent. There's reasons for that, but we don't mm. focus on that. What? <laughs> listen to what he just said. Just listen to what he said. Don't give him the sun man curve. Just listen to it. Sung hero. Society paints that Black fathers are absent. There's reasons for that. But we don't want to focus on that. Instead, the focus is on another reality. Mm. Actual data from a 2013 CDC report on father involvement finding black fathers more likely to be hands-on caregivers with their kids on a daily basis. 2013 report, that was self-reporting. I never like um, surveys that involve self-reporting. They So you ask the person, you know, what... How much time you spend with your children? Man, I'd be with my kids all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you seeing in these communities? You never see any fathers in any of these stories. But yet, they're the most hands-on fathers. This is just fucking bullshit. Reality. Actual data from a 2013 CDC report on father involvement finding black fathers more likely to be hands-on caregivers with their kids on a daily basis. True for 70% of black dads who live with their children. Compared with who believes that? Who believes that? Nobody. <laughs> like, like when they when they came with that data, the how could you repeat that? The 13th study where people they went around and asked a bunch of black dudes how much time they spend with their kids, and they all said they spend a bunch of time with their kids. The media and the government are the same. They're propagandists. That's what they do. You're showing us individual stories about real people, what they have to say about it. I don't I don't believe them at all. No. And CDC, 60% yeah, of yeah, white dads right. and 45% of Latino dads. They're more active in it. <laughs> this study showed, this self-reported study where they ask the person. They don't, like, take data like, um, uh, um, um, marriage, marriage, um, records or um child's you know just you know data that you can that 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 you you can compile without having to ask the specific person that's like asking a bunch of guys um uh yeah so um do you have do you jerk off and must get no we the study says only three percent of men jerk off like come on man you know what i'm saying you can't these self-reported surveys are, are trash. With their children, compared with 60% of white dads and 45% of Latino dads. Bathing their kids, picking their kids up from school, reading to them, all the daddy duties or the daily duties that a parent has, black fathers outperform their counterparts. Black... <laughs> Who are their counterparts? What the hell is he talking about? I wish that were white dads. White dads and the Latino dads. I thought they just said they did sixty percent. So no, they do more. You didn't listen. They do more. They than do 60? seventy. Yeah, the black dads are. T listen to the whole thing. Listen to the whole thing. The, the black dads are out, out performing every Black dads are the best dads on the planet. Black fathers are absent. There's reasons for that. But we don't want to focus on that. Instead, the focus is on another reality. Actual data from a 2013 CDC report on father involvement finding black fathers more likely to be hands-on caregivers with their kids on a daily basis. True for 70% of black dads who live with their children, compared with 60% of white dads and 45% of Latino dads. <laughs> no, we know that's crap. You mean 7%. <laughs> like, I mean, like, even, like... There's no way they could repeat. Like, how do you repeat that? Like, that's just like I said, that's just like a survey that says 3% of men masturbate. And of those 3% of men, 70% said they only do it once a year. Like, I mean. <laughs> once like, every leap year. Yeah, like, like what the fuck? Of course, you you walked up on me and like and, and asked me the question, and I, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah." No, <laughs> but you also asked the question.
of black fathers, you have to ask yourself, why are they not there? And the root of that also lies in fault, once again, with black women. You can't just, if you have a, uh, it's up to the woman to pick the type of man that she wants to have a child with. And a lot of these what women. What if the pick is a slim, AP? <laughs> what if the pick is a slim? And then there are a lot of men who want to stick around, but if she's so nasty and so violent, I mean, like Kim Fox, I mean, why would you stick around? They're gone. Yeah. Then he was weak from the beginning. Yeah, but I, I just I just don't believe that. Because, uh, like, think about this, man. Yes, the women are at fault to a degree, yes. But some men are biologically evolved to deal with some women shit. Like they, we, 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 son men, they son women. We can deal with that shit. Y'all can deal. Y'all deal with our shit. Like you said, you like, they like the niggas that's out here killing and shooting. They can deal with that shit. We can deal with their shit. So it's not like something that's foreign to us. I want to, I want to focus on the, the men though. Danny Nightblade says, sadly, the absent black father isn't a stereotype so much as it's an unfortunate reality for a lot of young son people. Woke lies won't change real. Yeah. The, the, no, like, the, no matter how many studies they doctor up, and it doesn't matter. Like, look at the, look at when we do these stories that only have women. Like, the, 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 all the stories we do, they're only talking to mothers. But yet, black fathers are like running circles around. <laughs> they not only like they didn't even just say like black fathers are doing a good job. They said it's it's kind of like that scene from um Austin Powers, a million gazillion billion. <laughs> it's like you know, what I'm saying? and they be violent stories, like tragic, heartbreaking stories. Right, and the dad is nowhere to be found. But let's be honest. Bathing their kids. When you picking... go out in public, how many times? How many times do you see black men with their ch wife and children in public compared to other races? Very rarely. Very I mean, rarely. Very rarely. Very Even rarely. on the weekends. Even True. Extremely about, rare. We're not just, just talking just about. Just walking any park, any yeah. uh, amusement park, going to the exactly. movie theater. How many times? And even when you do see, a lot of times, um, it there is the woman acts like she's not with the guy. That you can pick up some like friction there. It's not like when you watch like an Asian couple with his woman and kid, or white man with his woman or kid. You know, it's. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that's just, I don't know. It was yeah. done intentionally. If you, if you understand that, it's not a happenstance. This is not, this is what they were taught. Nah, man. Is this, it, is, yes, it's exactly this what is, they were taught. This is, this is, this is just the way we are. This is the no, way it's we not the way you are, sir. Yes, you it were, is. It's not the way I am. Look. Think no. about think about Africa, right? Think about Africa, right? I don't care about but, Africa. Well, listen, We're not listen. living there, sir. Listen, they no. aren't living there. But those are some people. It has nothing to do with Africa. We're in America. Hold on. So listen, are listen. they. But, listen, but, 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 sir, if you go to Africa, you see the same thing. When they do those shows and they show the women living in the huts with the five, six, and eight, ten kids, how many times do you see the father around? You don't. I don't gauge the rest wives. of the world by what we do. All right, man. Hold on. Let me let me let me move I'll, on, man. I'll you, let you have that. I'll let you have that. But I can prove five percent. That's the whole point. Let me let me move on. Man. I can prove. And of Latino dads bathing their kids, picking their kids up from school, reading to them, all the daddy duties or the daily duties that a parent has. Black fathers outperform their counterparts. Black Fathers Rock will honor ten dads in categories ranging from entrepreneur and dapper dad to surrogate dad. All honorees have to be great fathers and community citizens who demonstrate good character and integrity. This year's celebration falling on Juneteenth takes on more significance. Jorel saying systemic racism has poached black patriarchs from homes. Systemic racism. It's systemic racism for none of the dude. Listen, and I know a lot of Negroes because, you know, whatever, I'm just a son man. And my boys, they done, they done had babies since the late 90s. The dudes I grew up with, they was having babies in the late 90s. 
none of them dudes is not around their kids because of anything because of racism. It's always like my baby mama tripping or, you know, they got a new girl or they was a player and they had a bunch of girls at the time and she got pregnant, but they never intended to be with her anyway. So she just got a baby with a dude that never even was going to be with her anyway. Or some shit like that. It's never, man, I can't be with my kids because it's systemic racism. I've Don't never worry. heard that. All right, but what what if she's tripping because of, you know, systematic racism? Nah, it's none of that. It's just, it's, 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 it's organic shit. The nigga went and did some time. Nigga did 10 years. He came home. His girl got kids with another guy. She married another guy. So I got similar. it, too. Yeah, it's it's never racism I, that, that I hear. So let's assume it it is a systemic racism. Let's just say it is a systemic racism. Let's just play along. So that means you're you're so weak that you run away and you leave your family? That's another thing. If if they want to say, play the game, systemic racism, that tells you that if black men cannot stay with their families because of systemic racism, then they're weak and they're cowards. If this was, if this were influenced by, like, systemic racism or any type of racism, wouldn't that more than likely influence people to come together to want to protect against that and right. want to push them away. Yeah, yeah. Circle right. wagons. Yeah, they're not going to know, but nothing works with us because remember, racism makes us murder each other in the streets. Racism makes us go live in, voluntary living in cages for the rest of our lives. Racism makes us fucking litter and shit in our fucking neighborhoods. Racism makes us fucking can't fucking keep our houses and shit after the the parents bought the house and they own the house and the fucking next generation can't even keep the house that the fucking family already owns. The family owns the house and the next generation can't keep it. What if the white men that good? What what if the white men that good? Falling on Juneteenth takes on more significance. Jorel saying systemic racism has poached black patriarchs from homes. You can go back to slavery, how we were sold in, in, in auctions. You can go back to how the incarceration system has set it up for us not to win. Despite setbacks, black fathers are winning. Well, y'all may not know Fred Shropshire was the very first father of the year 2018. With education, support and validation from community efforts. Our goal at Black Fathers Rock is not only to shine positive uh, light on fatherhood, but to also provide resources to strengthen the family. In West Charlotte, Fred Shropshire. And now, listen, I'm not saying that this ain't a good thing and shit. There's not nothing redeemable from this shit. But it's bullshit. That's what I'm saying. That little study is bullshit. Do the one young guys bragging, I but tell's bragging about it. Yeah, if they want to get together and do this thing every year, I'm not going to fucking stand outside and fucking. Sh- with a sign telling them they don't do this. I don't give a fuck. So I don't like to ask that brother. I like to ask him. So since black men are, you know, having all these issues because of systemic racism, they can't save their families. So I would like to ask him, so do you think it's better that a black woman should just drop black men altogether and just divest themselves and just go after white men because they seem to stay with their families better or, or a Hispanic men or Asian men? I like to ask him. You know, and you know what the answer is going to be. Yeah, you no, no, know, we got to yeah. hold the brothers down. Well, if the brother's yeah. not going to stay around, why should you even bother with him? <sighs> Family. In West Charlotte, Fred Shropshire, WCNC hey, Charlotte. Hey. Fred is a good man. What a great group there. Well, tomorrow's celebration will take place at 820 Event Space and Catering in the NC Music Factory. Festivities. Marriage is not beneficial for men. Marriage is only beneficial for women. Why? Because marriage gives us protection. It gives us economics. It gives us, provides a place for us to have our children and to provide family structure. Marriage marriage is for men men as well. No, I want to have a of marriage, when you look at it, even from ancient times, it was a joint family together, but it was as a protection mechanism for women. In modern society today, See the difference. men, marriage it can be a burden because if a woman decides to divorce you, she can take half of your stuff, even though she That's gets right. Yeah, but, but the men we're talking about 
Like they don't, have, they not giving up half of nothing. Like, did it, like for, for 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 black men, marriage is a beneficial. Like for me, marriage is beneficial for me. Like, I like I man, my wife held it down for years, man. I mean, I I I just I, I think that like that talking point that marriage is only beneficial for women is like, I mean, yeah, it's it's outdated. When the woman's in the home, I guess. But if you're a man, you want children, right? Like, right. who's going to have your children? Well, do you, do you, are you are know, your children nothing? Like, do you, marriage you, for, is for potential fathers. Yeah, like if your children, like if your children are nothing, then then then, then okay. But if your children are something, then that's something that you got right. out of it. I mean, I just, I just, it just, I mean, and then sex and. Like it's lonely. Like I was single before. I I know the single life sounds good, and it's all it's a it was, single life is lonely as fuck, man. You 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 you. That's why you think you going to the club to meet somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, like it's the man, bro. He, I for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I don't agree. I can't agree with that um, one right there. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. That's a mutual benefit. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, but it has been. A mis- I'm not beyond, you know, common folk, not the aristocrats who are forced to marry this person or that person. But for the regular common people, it's a benefit. I want to have children. I want to have a future. I yeah, want to have a posterity. Yeah, um, ain't nobody here a fucking aristocrat, man. No, he said, he said common folk. He said, give, give me.